he's a bit of a controversial figure. In the years that I've known Wynton Marsalis, I found him to be a really generous teacher and mentor and um, a brilliant person and a brilliant musician and an inspiration. Well, about 20 years ago, I was with him in his apartment and he was ironing one of his own dress shirts. I asked him, how can I get better at my two feel? And he told me to check out Arvel Shaw playing with Louis Armstrong. I thought to myself, who is Arvel Shaw? I had never heard of him before. And it turns out Arvel Shaw is amazing. And it also turns out Winton tells that to a lot of young bass players. And I think the reason why is because Arvel really epitomizes and exemplifies the best of what a two feel is and is sort of a bridge in a sense of where two feel came and where it was going. I know there's other videos online about two feels, and with this video, I wanna co-sign some of them, but hopefully also give you a different perspective to improve your own line. So let's take a look now at two perfect two feels. Welcome to Learn Jazz Bass with Matt Rabicki. As always, like, subscribe, Check below for a link for a PDF related to what we're talking about today. And that has to do with two feels, like I mentioned. So let's take a listen first to Arvel Shaw playing with Louis Armstrong on Mac the Knife in Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> cool, right? And there's not a lot to what Arvel is doing. It's how he's doing it that's important. I would really encourage you to listen to this by yourself so that you can really hear the intricacies of what Arvel is doing and how he is making this feeling so good. He's not playing anything crazy note-wise and there's a lot of repetition in this transcription as well. You'll notice all these pages pretty much the same the whole time but it's also pretty great. It feels amazing. Now, I think one reason why it feels amazing is that there is an element of syncopation that he uses over and over again, anticipating beats three, anticipating beat one. For example, he's got this kind of rhythm over and over again. For example, um, right at measure six, one and two and three. One and two and three and four. Uh, he's got it in measure eight. In measure 10. Plus a little extra, a little anticipation there. It happens over and over and over again, as well as these neat syncopations like in uh, measure 23 to 24. That is anticipating the downbeat of that last measure there of that section. So these anticipations help to push it forward. Remember, we want to have a sense of stability and forward motion. Like when you're driving a car, you want it to be safe. You want it to sit on the road very solidly, but you also want to be moving forward. And that's what we want here in all the rhythmic feeling. With the two feel, it's no different than the walking feel. It's still the same time, and meaning that the, the rhythm, the underlying rhythm is happening is the same whether you're playing two or four. This is something that early players oftentimes get wrong. They think of it as two separate things, but really it's just one thing. <laughs> 
and this rhythm should feel like it's dancing the whole time. I know that other folks have mentioned dancing in their two feel, and that's exactly right. I am definitely co-signing on that. The way that you can get that to happen is with this sense of anticipations that come from syncopation. And also you'll notice that he is, and lots of great two feels do play very strong downbeats to start a measure. That's fine, but you also want to continue so that it feels like it's going somewhere. Additionally, the length of his notes is important. Yes, it's written as a, as a half note, for example, but there is a subtle decay in the note that happens because of both how he is playing and how his bass is set up and how what strings he's using and so on. These days with steel strings, and especially if you have sort of lower action, the note is gonna ring for a long time. And that is cool, no problem there. But the issue with that is we have to think about how we manipulate the length of that note so that we can hear the rhythm. If the notes just bleed into each other, you don't really hear what the rhythm is supposed to be. And that little bit of space helps to really define the sense of swing and the sense of buoyancy. Now, if our notes last a long time, even though these strings are actually synthetic, they're supposed to mimic guts and they do to some degree, they sort of last a long time where guts don't. So this open A lasts quite a long time. If I wanna stop it, I can simply place my left hand down. And the thing is, don't overdo it if you're practicing this yourself. If you want to try to create this little bit of sense of, of space, of open air, so to speak, don't do it too extreme. You don't wanna go unless it really calls for it, but just not all the time, right? Like, I mean, I'm exaggerating, of course, but you want it to have a natural decay and stop it in a natural place that matches the rhythm that's happening. So check out the way that he plays this, as opposed to the notes, the way that he plays it really, really helps to f make you feel like this to feel belongs, is something special, he's engaged with the music, he's engaged with the band, it's not something that you're just going over, you're, you're passing time until you get to walking. It's something special in and of itself. Lastly, about this rhythm, rhythm that we talked about, where mm, one and two and three, four, 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 like this. This is a rhythm that is sometimes called or can be called in certain circumstances, the bambula rhythm from West Africa. Bam, the word bambula actually also represents a drum and a dance and possibly other things. But this particular rhythm is found in all kinds of Western music, even till today. The pop music that we hear right now in 2023, you hear this rhythm, right? Uh, right? That comes from the bambula. So you'll hear it everywhere in Western music and all the musics that came out of the African diaspora, that came out of jazz, that came out of New Orleans. That's an important rhythm in and of itself. We'll actually look at that rhythm in detail in another video. So let's listen now to another perfect two feel from the great Paul Chambers playing on St. Louis Blues.
love this recording. It has such a sense of joy and playfulness in the whole thing. You'll notice I also included several uh, choruses of Walking Line as well, even though we're talking about a two feel, but the Walking Line is just so great that I, I had to share it with you because I enjoy it so much. Not only the note choices, they're simple and nothing we haven't talked about already, but again, that feeling of moving forward, having fun, being alive is so prevalent in this whole recording. So I wanted to share a little bit of the walking line with you as well. But notice on the two feel, Paul is also doing this bambula rhythm. He is anticipating beat three in measure two, for example, it's here's measure one. Didn't quite play it exactly right, the notes there, but you get the idea. That kind of anticipation happens all over the place on beats going, anticipating beat three, anticipating beat one of the next measure. It really helps pushing forward, right? Also, there's a lot more ornamentation here in Paul's line, isn't there? And at this point, we've gotten to where sort of the two feels sort of settles in this kind of playing of what we call jazz, this black American music. Um, it settles into this kind of thing where you've got that, that uh, ground rhythm of the one and the three, playing on one and three, but more ornamentation in, a, in an authentically appropriate way. That's the thing. As others have said, and I co-sign that as well, doing too much will not allow the feel to seem settled. You want to be settled, but you also want it to feel alive. Paul does that all over the place. Um, uh, at the end of the first page, for example, on the B flat minor, one and two, right? One and two and three, triple. So one and two, uh, leading into that second measure. There's all these little extra skipped eighth notes and so on that make a difference. Additionally, you'll notice that I put in some articulations here and there for this particular line a staccato note where it's supposed to be short or a, a, an emphasized note, the sort of side carrot, uh, in places where it's really important to the feeling of the line. So I really wanted to put it in there. Normally we don't put articulations in every line, but I wanted to bring attention to those places because I think it helps with that rhythmic feeling in the two feel and in the walking line. I love too in the second chorus, right on the first page, um, in measures um, three and four, he plays. That also gives that real sense of uh, pushing forward. Rooted. Rooted. Pushing forward. Rooted. Makes sense? Going back and forth between solid and movement. So I hope that you've enjoyed what we talked about today. Simple ideas that I think that you can apply very quickly to your own two feel. As always, please subscribe, like, check for that link below for the PDF. And remember, straight ahead and strive for tone.